Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you are, I hope you have blue skies and we're going to put a smile on your heart today. Welcome to that other lifestyle podcast. I am your host, Jason. Let's leave vanilla behind as we dive into the wild lifestyle. You want to deeper toes into the lifestyle? You can find a link to sign up for a trial account of SDC on my website, thatotherlifestyle.com. I also have a Patreon, patreon.com slash that other lifestyle, where I share all kinds of useful knowledge and guides to help everyone in their lifestyle journey. Please note this podcast is intended only for adults. It is very definitely not safe for work. We will talk about adult or sexual topics, and I'm going to use some salty language often. This content is for entertainment purposes only, and again, only for those over 18 years of age. I also try to be as inclusive with my language and my guests too, and all the terms that I can. It can be challenging to formulate and write and say all the inclusive terms in every instance. For simplicity's sake and time management, I may use terms like husband or wife or partner or spouse for the purpose of the narrative I am sharing. This podcast is for everyone though, no matter your background, gender identity, gender expression, or whatever truth you may be living. Everyone is welcome no matter how you personally experience the lifestyle and ethical non-monogamy. Today, dear listeners, I have the most fantastic, wonderful guest who is on with us today. Please introduce yourself. Hello, friends. I'm so delighted. It is the biggest, happiest smile, everyone, right now looking at her through this Zoom call. She has the biggest smile and the prettiest eyes I have encountered in a long time. It's so it's so wonderful to to meet you all. Thank you for having me. I'm so yes. I am soul and I'm I am soul lifestyle. And it is such an honor to be with you. It's such an honor to be on this journey with you. It's such an honor to be meeting you. It's such an honor to be with Jason today. I am absolutely thrilled and delighted to be here. So thank you. So before we go any further Tell everyone if they're interested in more information, because one of the tricks of uh, podcasting, broadcasting, you want to make sure you say the lead as many times as you can. How can people find, if they listen to all this and like, oh my God, she is so amazing. I want to find out more information. What is your website? Thank you. So you can find me at soullifestyle.co. So S-O-L-L-I-F-E. E S T Y L E dot C O. So no dot com dot C O. And just to share with everybody, we will definitely be putting that in the show notes. I encourage everyone to go check out our website, check out all the amazing stuff that you do. And to give a little backstory to this, I had put out into the universe, like I want to meet some more interesting people. And just so happened, I met you through a mutual friend. And the wild, so I was doing a show, just so y'all know, on SDC, I sometimes do a show with um, this guy, Peter. He's the lifestyle gentleman. You can go look him up on SDC. So he had me on his show, show and Soul just was on there too. And she's listening to everything and gave me the nicest compliment. Oh my God, share it. I don't even remember the compliment. Which one? Enlightened. Oh, yes, 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 yes. So I was so absolutely delighted. So I popped on, I popped on this podcast and I was absolutely, I was, my heart was so filled because in the same, in the same um, sharing of Jason, I was also calling in men into my universe who I could really, really um, count on to be leaders and teachers in this work. And so here I am logging on to this podcast and I met Jason and Peter and I really just felt this deep connection with both of these gentlemen. And I reached out to Jason immediately because I felt this expansive, enlightened um, synergy. I just knew. That's a good word for it. Yeah, I just knew you were someone I had to know. And I knew, I already knew, I already knew that I knew you. And I knew that this, you know, I knew that this relationship, I knew that the work that both of us do and what we bring into the world was going to be such a match and such a powerful force to share together as a man and a woman in this space. Like it's so 
it's so profound and it's so dynamic to have what you have and to have what I have and then bring it into union together to share in the same container. It's just, it's, I I can't even express it. I get goosebumps because it overwhelms me in in like the space of gratitude and this space of sharing. I just, I want the world to know. I want everybody to know it. And just, just so you know, the first time I talked to her, it was like a week ago, I think. We talked for two hours. Yeah. We've never met before. And we talked right. for two hours on the phone. Oh. And what's wild, as I meet people in the lifestyle, like educators, like Soul, and other people, we all say the same thing very differently, yeah. but we all come from the same place. And we're all trying to share very, very similar information with people, very similar lessons with people. Granted, I say things, I may say things completely differently than she does, but it's wild how there is that synergy between the messages and how we do want to make the lifestyle community, the entire culture better as a cohesive thing and, and bring, yeah. bring and so much light to it. And bring so much wisdom. So not only do we want it to make it to like cohesive, but it's it's like everybody's capacity to hear and everybody's capacity to listen comes through a different it comes it comes through differently right so the way that i hear the way that i receive is different from the way you hear and you receive and so even though our messaging is so similar the somebody else is going to hear it somebody else who didn't hear it the way you presented it is going to hear it the way i presented it and somebody else who didn't hear it the way i presented it is going to hear it the way you presented it and it becomes this really beautiful platform and this foundation to be able to share it so much more expansively to so many more people right and like, learn and learn and learn, learn. and yeah. as we were talking and i got a better idea of what you offer and the play and, and so let me put it this way to all of my dear listeners i am a guy i have a penis yes i am a masculine presenting individual there is no denying that based on the beard and the vikingness yes there i know that when i i, I approach things very differently and hearing how you approach it and this and the things that you can help women with that is definitely something more that is needed in the world. And I know I can, I can sit here all day and give all this great advice and wisdom, but hearing the, hearing your approach to everything, it just struck me as amazing because I know, and your primary clientele is women and yes. you do help couples and stuff, but women, y'all women out there, women I need to hear what she says. Y'all need to hear what she does because it is so fantastic, because it is so needed by so many people. So tell them, give people an overview, what, yeah. give them yeah. an idea. Oh, I love this. I love this. So I primarily, I primarily work with women. I think of, I think of what I offer as I work with women first and I work with women's partners. It's a natural flow, right? It's a natural evolution of the expansion. And I truly came into this work because I was looking for this for myself. I was looking for this type of expansion, this type of education, this type of knowledge, this type of experience. I was looking for it for me and how I could further expand myself in this space. And that was really the creation of Soul Lifestyle. It was really, you know, I've been working for women for decades. I mean, working with women for decades, uh, but being able to serve women in this space uh, I wasn't finding, I wasn't finding what I was wanting. I wasn't finding the spaces and the experiences that I wanted to be able to expand my depths and to be able to offer that to more women and be more <laughs> expansive. And so I created these offerings and truly I take, you know, I take these experiences and 
one of the offerings that I have is I work primarily or I have a, a women's offering where it's a works it's a workshop type experience. I don't really call it a workshop because that gets a little bit linear and a little bit corporate. Mm-hmm. So everything Oh no, we don't do corporate here. No, no, fuck corporate. No, and we don't do linear. So everything I approach, everything in my everything in my business and in my brand is called an experience. I refer to it as an experience because that's truly what it is. It's an offering of an experience. And we come together in my women's experiences. We come together as a collective, a collective of women. And it is the most profound and beautiful experience I think that I have probably witnessed in my time here as a human in this lifetime. It is it is so magical to come together as women, as a collective of women. Mm-hmm. And truly what happens first is when women come together, it gives them a safe space and it gives them a platform to be able to convene and release and relax into who they truly are. Once you enter my space, it's a private space. It's always discreet and it's very personal and intimate. And so once you enter the space that we're working in, the door is closed. You don't have to think about and you don't you don't worry or uh, you can close the tabs in your brain of all of the external um, the external noise that's going on. It's a good word. These that that you entered with, and that stops at the door, and then you enter, and you can release that, and you are welcomed into this very intimate, very sensual, very sexy space where you immediately feel safe, and you feel held, and you know that you're going to be heard, and so we come together. And every experience is different because every single woman who who joins is a different individual being. But really, the construct of the work and the construct of what we do is it's it's um it's tantric it's tantric integration and it's sacred sexuality, and that's really the work that I offer and that's what I teach is tantric integration and sacred sexuality. And I come from this from a background of yogic philosophy and Ayurvedic principles and tantric wisdom and um, who health and wellness. And I've been in the health and wellness scene for decades. And I've really, I've really melded all of these, all of these pieces together and all of these teachings that I have been privileged of obtaining. And I've melded them together into this beautiful offering for women. And it's, it's just absolutely astounding because every woman who joins these offerings, for example, comes through with maybe an expectation and maybe not an expectation. Maybe maybe the expectation is truly to, to gift herself a few hours where she can focus on her, which yes. is, that's a gift, right? That's a rare thing. That's a rare gift. That's a rare gift. And to be able to gift yourself a time where you know that you're going to be able to take a deep dive into your sensuality and your sacred sexuality, and you know that you're in a safe space to do that, that that is that is like that is a gift that 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 I don't even I don't I can't even I can't even concept like I, I don't even have the words because it's so it's so it's so sacred, mm-hmm. right? It's something that we don't do to for ourselves. And then to be able to do that with a collective of women that are in uh, that are in similar mindset. And they may not be similar in uh, lifestyle, right? Like it doesn't matter where you are in your lifestyle journey per se. You could be a brand new person or you could be an experienced person in your practices. This is about this is a this is about deeply connecting with yourself as a woman and being able to offer yourself the sensuality and the sexuality 
that you want to you want to develop, you want to expand, you want to peel back the layers, you want to you want to face your blocks, you want to face what is holding you back from your most erotic orgasmic pleasure? What are those things that keep you from experiencing that? And then being able to communicate that to your partner or your partners. Yes. And be able to do that so empowered and be able to do that with a strong yes or a strong no and be able to own it, to be able to own your pleasure and to be able to own your sexuality and to be able to own your sensuality it is dynamite it's dynamite. oh i believe you i i know there are more women i know there are women who need this there's so many and not only women but the men too like our men need this from our women our men need to hear what our women want and our men need to hear what our women need and our men need to hear what our women desire and yes. our men need to hear it from a strong yes and our men need to hear it from a strong no and our men our men who are equally in this surrender into this space of of this divinity mm-hmm. where the women the women are the women are exalted women are worshiped and i don't mean that in a weird thing i mean that in a like the pussy is the gateway to the most highest potential of humanity, man. And- I agree. I mean, come on. I'm personally fond of them myself. Oh, they're so beautiful. And it is the power, right? Like it's the power center of a woman. That is, you tap into a woman's yoni, you tap into a woman's pussy, and you engage with her in that sacred space. You are witnessing, you are witnessing her most profound and her most powerful, highest self. I like how this stuff is so. I can't even think of the word. So insanely awesome. It's hard to find the words to describe it. Like our our English language is failing us right now. Yes, because it's so it's not even you get to this, you get to this space where it doesn't even feel like it's human. But Mm -hmm. that is actually that is actually our highest potentiality of our most pleasurable orgasmic self. Like it is, it is erotically intoxicating. It is pleasure at its most powerful place. So another, another thing that I really, that I really like to speak on is passion, power, and pleasure. Mm -hmm. Three P's, right? The three P's. And those three P's are within each of us. And how we access those is up to every single individual who walks this planet. However, when you tap into the highest sexuality and the highest sensuality of a woman, that is when you are witnessing her most powerful, most pleasurable, most passionate self. So for some reason, I suddenly had that scene from Oppenheimer in my brain where they're watching the bomb go off. And you stand there with the shades in the bunker and they just show the giant flash of light. I don't that just flashed through my brain. And I know what you're talking. I I I'm close to seeing it. And there's so many see, that's the wild thing. Whenever I talk to talk to Soul, that she she talks and then the, my brain is like, Oh yeah, that's a thing we need to talk about. That's a thing too. That's a thing. And the first the, just circling back around, let's loop back around spaces creating a safe space for women for women oh jason so peter and our buddy peter our mutual friend peter he wrote a book lifestyle gentleman go check it out i think his website is lifestylegentleman.com y'all for every man out there you should read this book because he does a chapter on creating lifestyle spaces for women that lifestyle spaces are supposed to be for women men we're just we're the enablers of it and we're the protectors of it, but the truly 
good and think about this like terms of a party a truly great party is where women feel comfortable enough to let down their guard and enjoy themselves and for men it's our responsibility to give them that space to enable them to have it to protect that space but yeah that create their their in this world there are very few places where women can feel truly comfortable and it's not the office because you have all that stuff there. It may not even be at home because you have anxiety there about stuff. So in the lifestyle, it falls on men. Hi, guys. We need to be respectful of women spaces. We need to be respectful of spaces that allow women to express themselves fully. And I love that you're able to create that space nice. to let women be these beautiful, wonderful people that they are. And have that Oppenheimer moment when the bomb goes off. Yes, yes, yes. And that is that is truly powerful. And speaking of little space holders. Oh, yeah. So just to give everybody on the podcast, her her, her dog showed up. What's the dog's name? Her name is Luna. Oh, Luna's gorgeous, everyone. Luna's a golden retriever. Golden. And if you've taken my single guy course, it's odd because my single guy course, I tell guys about having chihuahua energy at a party versus golden retriever energy. And we can tie all this back together because when a single guy goes to a party and they have chihuahua energy, chihuahuas have no respect for personal space in the bad way. They want to run up there and interject themselves and just be a little Thank yippee you. nuisance. Love you. Golden retrievers, a lot more respectful, a lot more chill. They just let the fun, the action spin around them. And it goes back to the spaces, having safe spaces for women so they don't have to worry about a chihuahua biting their ankles. Yes. And men, we can just hang back and just be the pretty dogs we are and just chill, just have that good energy. The good energy and the the, the good grounded energy that's stable and safe. Yes. And that is one thing. So that is one thing as women. So we, you know, I'm not going to go on the whole cultural thing we all have we all we all know it we all have it 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 just is what it is yes so as women as women being able to convene in a safe space is priority number 1 in order for a woman's pussy in order for a woman's yoni to fully open and feel like she is capable of even beginning to access her highest, most erotic self, she must feel safe. Her foundation yep. has to be secure. It has to be secure. If that isn't there, the yoni and the pussy is not going to open. It is not going to open for that erotic pleasure. It There can be a lot of, um, you know, like the what do we call it? The pretend orgasm. We mm -hmm. can do a lot of that. Oh yes. You know, performative stuff. We talked about that. I mean, me and, that? me and Sol talked about somehow I came up performative performance. Yeah. Yes. And when a woman feels truly safe and secure in her environment, she can, she can drop in. She can drop in to that root chakra. She can drop in to her yoni. She can drop into her power center, which is her pussy. And she can, she can access that from all of the, all of the chakras down and she can feel that. And she can begin to witness that within her body. And she can begin to witness and feel what actually feels sensual and what actually feels like a good, a solid yes to her. And communicate it. And communicate it. That's a big, that's a big deal. Okay. It's Where's my rant hat? So it's in the vanilla world. Y'all, if you're vanilla, I'm, I'm being honest with you here. Women... All right, and I'm making some generalized sexist, sexist comments. Y'all going to forgive me for this, too. Women don't, may not, some, may not have the word, the proper words and the ability to communicate what they actually enjoy. There is a lot of misconceptions out there about what good sex should be, what good intimacy should be between two people or even a group of people. There's a lot of misconceptions, and people try to live up to those misconceptions instead of communicating to their partner, yes, I enjoy this. 
So giving, and I know for us, when we started the lifestyle, my wife learned, we tell people, my wife and me, we learned a whole new vocabulary and we were a lot more comfortable sharing just with each other, our sexual sides and sharing what we liked and didn't like. So yeah, having, having a course, having a workshop, have something where women can come together and learn to communicate. And the husbands, I no no disrespect to the husbands. We're receptive. Most husbands will say some. Are, we are receptive. We are not just, we're not speaking the same language. Right. Well, and isn't that the truth? Isn't that the truth? You know, you're, we, 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 we exist on different planets energetically, yet we coexist here, right? Like we coexist as humans on this planet earth, yet energetically we are so far from being on the same planet. And so being able to communicate and being able to be in that space together, it's a, it's a, um, it's a practice. You have yeah. to practice it. You have to yep. learn. You don't just wake up learning how to speak man. You don't just wake up learning how to speak. It is different languages, though. It is different mindsets and different approaches. Yes. And the way we approach problems, if they're problems, we, we may not yes. even see a problem that our spouse does. And learning to communicate better, to be able to say, I like this, I don't like this, yes, no. That that is a super valuable thing that you can learn in the in, and learn the lifestyle, but for women going to a workshop like this, that is amazing. It's that amazing. is amazing potential there. It's amazing, and not only so. Here's here's another here's another piece to that. So emotionally, right? Like emotionally, we exist. I, I don't I don't think there's anything that could be more polar opposite than. Uh, emotionally men and women we women are women are feelers women women um absorb we hold every emotion in our in our vagina we hold every single thing that's ever happened in our life in our yoni in our in the tissue of our vagina and in our hips like that's where it is mm -hmm. and so when you know when you're trying to communicate that with a man men are often fixers right men yep. want i am just fix it they just want to fix it and a woman doesn't necessarily always want a man to fix it for her. He wants to, he, she wants, she wants him to hear her. She wants him to listen in order for her to be able to come to her own solution, whatever that is. And it's, it's really, really interesting when you learn to be able to communicate. So it's not even, it's not even learning how to communicate. I'll, I'll, I'll transcribe this to man speak. Yes, okay? please. A woman is carrying around about 20 suitcases yeah. and it's not that she wants you to help her carry the suitcases. She wants to put them down. down. Our natural inclination is to say, let me help you carry them. That's not the solution necessarily. She wants to put them down and yeah. we're not, and we don't have to pick them up and carry them for her. We have to help her set them down. Yeah. Transcribing it. Man speak. That's, that's good man speak. That's good man speak. Right, right, right. I don't we don't necessarily want you to carry them and take them with us. We want to put them down. You know what? And that goes back to the safe space. That goes back to men. Oh yeah. Well, right? Like we were on that. Men being able to hold the space, the sacred space, the safe space. Mm -hmm. So that women have that solid foundation and they have that platform to be able to expand from. And because women have that. I'm not too big on traditional gender roles here, y'all, because you know I do a lot of the cleaning in the house. But look at what we're saying. It's men. We are naturally the protectors and the yes. enablers and the, yes. the stalwart guardians. Women want these spaces. That's yes. where we come in is guarding these spaces, creating them letting them have these spaces so they can put down the luggage, put down the baggage. Down the baggage and and be able to launch from. Yep. Like be able to be able to stand on that solid platform, that solid, 
that solid um, foundation that you're holding, that you're building, and be able to truly launch so that she can expand into her highest self, which is her most erotic self, which is her most erotic. Uh, and guys, you know they bring us with them, right? When a woman hits that hits that level, we're coming too. They're not leaving us behind right here. here. You're right there. We're You're benefiting right there. too from this. Yes. Yes. You are right there. And it's, it's that it's something that is more expansive than, than, um, than, than an orgasm. It's something that's more expansive than coming. It is, it is this deep sensuality on every level of sex and intimacy and connection and energy it's it's that right it's those things that you come along for it's those things that you experience alongside her with her at the same time just shut up and get in the car man just, just shut up get in the car it, go along for the ride i promise it is fantastic it's been <laughs> Fantastic. It's fantastic. <laughs> so, all right. We've been, we've been, you know, just diving into a completely different wild sub. There is something you told me the first time when we talked. There is something that you can never master. Oh. I love, I love this line because coming from a guy, y'all, I have a pretty good understanding of this topic because I adore them. They're, they're just exquisite things. But, yes. But, go ahead. Okay, gentlemen, gentlemen and women, we will never master the pussy. The pussy will never be mastered. The pussy is an ever-changing, always evolving being. She is her own individual, and she changes throughout our entire lives. She changes on a weekly basis. She changes with our moon cycle. She changes with the weather. She changes with our age. She changes with our partner. And science backs and, all this uh, up. She changes with, with your stress level. She changes with the conversation you just had 15 minutes ago. She is an ever-changing, ever-evolving being that resides within your human container. And it is it is something that is so beautiful when you can think when you can think of her, when you can think of a woman's pussy, when a woman can think of her pussy, her yoni, her vagina in that capacity. It brings such a beautiful element to it because it isn't a it isn't a checkbox, right? It's not a uh okay um uh i touched her and i went down on her oh you and have to do 50 heart strokes yeah, it doesn't no. orgasm by then that's no. it that's it right no. no 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 we don't do that that's we don't do that it's like there's no there's no pussy there's no vagina that's broken she's never broken it's it's that whatever was in that moment wasn't her yes. It wasn't her yes that day. It wasn't her yes that moment. Maybe that's her yes tomorrow. Maybe that's her yes next week. It doesn't mean she doesn't like it. It means it wasn't her yes that time, that moment. And so being able to think about the yoni, the pussy in that really, really sacred space. So this really brings back the sacred sexuality and and the tantric inter, in, um, integration. It's like it is this. It is this. It, she has her own personality. She has her own needs. She has her own desires. And a lot of times, as women, until we actually truly drop in and connect, we don't even know what she wants. Right. Right? Like we have to connect. We have to be there with her. Otherwise, we aren't capable of communicating with our partners what that yes is, what that no is, what that desire is, what that pleasure point is. Right? It really is this own. I mean, I talk, I talk to her like she's her own being because she is. And I tap into that and I, and I, 
I ask questions, right? Like you ask her questions, you you have a conversation, you experience her like you would your partner. Mm-hmm. And she's the one who drives the communication in a sexual experience. She's the one who she's the one who's receiving, so she's the one who needs to be the communicating. And every communication, every conversation is different, right? Every conversation that you have with a face-to-face person is different. It's not going to be the same every day. Nobody wakes up the same every single day. Nobody drinks their coffee the same exact way every single day. They may add the same things to their coffee, but they're not going to sip it the same every day. There's always a difference. There's always an evolution always a change so you mentioned a key word there broken never and there's something there's something out there that bothers me there's this misconception that porn has created in so many people's heads that if a woman can't do something or won't do something or can't experience a certain kind of pleasure like we're right we're going to take an example here squirting not all women can do that there are a lot of women who can't but right. there is this very prevalent perception out there generated by porn and it and it's just it's out there and if a woman can't do that then it becomes a challenge to make them or if the woman can't do it then they feel they're broken somehow um because they they can't do this thing when really it's just someone bashing against your bladder till you lose control of it it and I don't like that. I, I don't like how the vanilla world, how porn has put into so many's head, so many people's heads that were broken. No. And from a man's perspective, it's, well, if I don't have at least eight inches, I'm not good or I'm broken. And look, I have a good authority. So it's going to back me up here. Five inches is plenty if you know what the hell you're doing with it. Yes. So yes. that addressing that, putting, helping women with that, Men carry it too, but talking about women here, helping them address these feelings that somehow they're broken, somehow that something isn't right because mass media porn has put it into your head. And that's just not true. From a guy, every vagina is beautiful. Oh my God, they're amazing. All of them, but. They're amazing. And yes, yes. So there's no, vaginas are not broken. Vaginas are not broken. Women are not broken. Every single individual and every single person has their journey. And whatever that journey is and whatever that journey looks like, there are layers. There are layers of this journey. So it's the unlearning, right? Right. It's the unlearning. We have to unknow in order to learn. We have to unknow in order to be. We have to unknow in order to be present. We have to unknow in order to feel. We have to unknow. It doesn't matter if you are squirting or you're not squirting. There, You're not broken. You're not broken. It's what is your, what is as a woman, what is your pleasure point? As a yes. woman, what is desirable and pleasurable to your vagina what feels good inside of you if without any preconceived notions of what should be no yeah and here you know here take let's take it back all the way all the way so let's just let's just say that this man thinks in his brain that in order to pleasure this woman, he needs to, he need, and here's another word, friends. Here's another word that we have to demystify. This make word. We don't make, we don't make a vagina. What? You mean how to, you know, I'm not supposed to make something happen? I can't make her orgasm. I can't, I can't make him come. There's no making here. We don't make. I like that. It, I like that a lot or pussy do anything. And so I feel like this whole, this whole, um, cultural thing that's, that's come up with, I, I'm, you know, it's my job or I'm a hero. If I, I'm a hero, if I make her squirt, I know what I'm doing. If I make her squirt, no, 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 no. Her vagina, her pussy 
may not like that. And it right. doesn't want to be made to do anything. The only thing it wants is to be heard and seen and received. And it wants to feel pleasure. It wants mm-hmm. to feel pleasure. And some days that pleasure may literally be a breast massage because a woman's breasts, a woman's nipples are directly connected to her vagina. Some days she may just want a breast massage. She may not actually want a penis inside of her vagina and she may come, she may orgasm simply from a breast massage. And that is so powerful. So there's no making a woman squirt. There's no making a woman come. There's no making a woman orgasm. And same for women. There's no making a man hard. There's no making a man come. There's no making a man orgasm. It's direct relation to what your body is desiring and how your body is conceptualizing pleasure today. I love that. This experience in this sexual session, right? This moment of sensuality. And I I'm picking on squirting here, but it does apply to so many other acts that we may see in media and we may see out there. It applies to so many other things that it's what does the person like? What does the person actually want in this moment? Yes. Instead of delivering to them our preconceived notions of what good sex is, what does good sex look like to them and being brave enough to ask that question? Yes. And that is so sexy. That is so sensual. And that is a turn on. That is more sexy than I'm going to make you squirt. No. What sexy is, what are you desiring? What's sexy is, what do you need today? What's sexy is, what do you want today? What is desirable to you? What is pleasurable to you today? And then being able to offer that back to your partner, that is what is sexy. That is what is going to bring your highest level of orgasmic pleasure. That oh my God, we have some gold right here, everybody. This gold. is gold, gold, good stuff. Golden. Good stuff right here. Truly, truly it is. And you know what's phenomenal about this is it goes back to the basics of communication. It goes back to the basics of connection, Mm -hmm. right? It goes back to the very simplicity of an ask. This is not rocket science. It's not. It's not, but some people are scared to ask. They don't know how to ask or they don't have the worst ask. They're scared to ask, especially coming from the vanilla world where, and people just got some issues coming into the lifestyle. We are a lot more open with sex. We're a lot more free about it. We can have, we're sex positive. We can have those conversations, but even in the lifestyle, there is still barriers. And we talked about this, the conditioning. There are still barriers that we have to overcome because we're carrying conditioning from previous lives. Oh, from previous lifetimes. And, you know, like the conditioning, the conditioning, the generational conditioning that we have to overcome, right? Even as individuals, not even culturally speaking, just individually, the generation, the generations that have come before us. And how do we? How do we peel back those layers? You know, that is that is it the basis, you know, the basis to that is communication and the basis to that is being able to tap in and it's being able to witness your own pleasure centers and your own sensuality and to be able to communicate that back to a part. Yeah, cuz we speaking of the generational thing, y'all, we probably learned about sex from people who never had good sex had good sex like wrap your brain around that one we're, we were taught and educated growing up and through our lives we were taught by people who never had good sex yeah and in the lifestyle we have the potential by learning to communicate better by creating safe spaces for women by helping women the most amazing things ever oh my god women are awesome helping them get past so much that is just a beautiful thing. That's a great thing that the lifestyle offers. 
It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. And you know what's so interesting about the lifestyle that I've that I've witnessed is it's like there is there is a freedom. There is a freedom to speak. Yes. When so I do a lot of energy work, right? You know, I I come into this world as a as a healer, as a teacher, as a guide. And so in the chakra system, in the energetic world, when our voice, when our when our throat chakra is engaged, we feel man and women, it do, it doesn't matter, man or woman, we feel empowered. Because when our voice is heard and when our voice is received, we feel safe. We feel heard. It's a very simple give and take. It's a, it's a simple it's a simple energetic receiving. And so, when when you can communicate these things openly, which is interestingly, I would love to see this expand to the entire globe. However, it's more prominent right now in the lifestyle we speak we speak deeply we say things that are maybe something that you wouldn't talk about you know we use vulnerable vulnerable oh jason that's that's the word it's vulnerable it's vulnerable which we have to be vulnerable if we're going to be sharing our bodies with other people we're sharing and we're sharing our most intimate. N- not only are we sharing our bodies, but we're sharing our most intimate selves and we're sharing our most intimate person. Yeah. Because right? there's so many lifestyle people who tell me their lifestyle friends, they're so much closer to than their vanilla friends because there is a freedom in communication. Yep. You can talk about whatever you want, you can flirt, you can be your true self. And that's another thing I really love about the lifestyle is that freedom of expression and, and freedom of expression and freedom of expression. And that's another thing I teach is freedom of sexual expression, right? So when you are sexually expressing, when you are free, ex- when you are free to express your voice and you are free to express your sensuality and your sensuality, you are what I like to call um, a balanced human. You mm-hmm. are mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, sexually, energetically in a container where you feel more balanced. You are in flow, right? You're not hiding something from, from this environment because I can't talk about sex here. Or I can't use the word pussy or vagina or yoni here. So I have to filter every single thing, which yes. is in my head, because I have to think about every single word that goes out of mm. my mouth first. So I'm very much in my head. So I'm now I'm a heady person because I have to think and translate everything because in order to be in my true self, I have to be able to be in my fullest sensuality and sexuality. And when you're in your head, right? Bringing that back around full circle, you need safe spaces in order to do that. Yes. Look at us. We did good. We brought a full circle. It's full circle. That's awesome. It's full circle. And at the end of the day, it's not even about sex. Sex is just- No. Sex is a piece of it. It's about learning how to have really- awesome, authentic, vulnerable communication skills. It's about learning how to be in your most vulnerable, authentic self to be able to communicate and feel empowered centrally, sexually, emotionally, spiritually. All of those pieces, when you can be intelligently Emotional when you're when you're emotionally intelligent. So let's flip those words. When you're emotionally intelligent, and you are uh, spiritually balanced, and you are sexually enlightened, 
You are in your authentic self. You are standing in your true self. You are expressing your being through this human container, through this human construct, like these Mm -hmm. vessels that we embody. You are living your truth, right? Like you're living your you are living your truth. You're living your most vulnerable, beautiful, truthful, authentic. Yes. Thing. That is a d- and the essence. And we lose the word. There are no words to describe that. It's so hard to find a string of adjectives and adverbs and words to really describe that feeling. Because once you feel it, it's like, oh snap, this is amazing. Amazing. And it feels like it feels non-human because we've been conditioned to be so linear, right? We've mm-hmm. been conditioned to show up to work nine to five. And we've been conditioned to, oh, I don't even want to go there because that's a whole podcast <laughs> of like Let's, hours. Let's do another episode. We'll just do, do another, another episode to talk about human conditioning. That's human conditioning. We will do a whole episode on human conditioning. However, when you're in this space and you feel safe, held, and heard, you you are completely supported to step into that authentic self. You are you are supported to be your true self, and there's there's a non judgment there, right? Isn't that the isn't that one of the greatest human fears is being judged? You're right. con- being judged well there's a non-judgment that goes away right that, that doesn't enter there's no there's no space for that it isn't really it isn't welcome right it's not part of it well you have shared some amazing fantastic words of wisdom today i'm going to cherish and i'm definitely going to have you back on the show for another episode um tell everybody again how they find you while the awesome stuff you do Yes. Okay. So I would love to see every woman across the globe. I would love to be able to touch every single woman on this planet. Um, that's a big ask. That's a really big mm-hmm. ask. But we, the more we share, the more we touch. And women's partners, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because I love them too, and I I have space for them, and I hold space for I hold space for women's partners as well. So soullifestyle.co and within soullifestyle.co, you can find the offerings that I currently have. Uh, We're a destination lifestyle brand. So we travel the globe teaching and we Mm -hmm. travel the globe um, integrating tantric tantra and sacred sexuality. And we, you will find us in different cities on different dates. You can work with us, you know, some of the ways that you can work with us are uh, through our group experiences, the women's Mm -hmm. experiences, the group experiences that are for couples. The other places you can work with us, we offer, uh, we, we offer to a limited audience, private one-on-one experiences, which are in real life. Mm -hmm. And then we also do remote coaching and we do online classes. We have something for there's everyone. Something for everyone. No matter where you are on your journey, there's there's, there's a place for you here. Everyone. And that's really important to us too, is to be able to is to be able to um have an offering for every every audience. So mm-hmm. there, there's something for everyone and everybody can connect with with a piece of what we have. And 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 you know, it's it's not about it's not about what level you're at. It's about it's about where you want to go. Oh, that's a good way to put it. Right? It's about like that. It's about and it's about where you are right now because that is the greatest gift. The acknowledgement mm-hmm. of where you are right now transforms into where you want to be. And we don't often know where we want to be, but knowing where we are right now is the first step. Oh. It's That's good. Really, it's Those really are good. Really, really beautiful. I would love. I would love to meet every single person, and 
reach out, right? Reach out, reach out. It's an open invitation. And it's an awesome. open invitation of connecting. Awesome. Thank well, you. thank you so much for hanging out with us today and telling us all about that stuff you do. And you have so many words of wisdom. Just beautiful right here. And again, it's like that Oppenheimer scene with the bombs going off and he's just standing there looking at it. Like, yeah, that that sort of um now I'm losing my words too. You know, that's when that's when a good time to end a podcast is when we can't think of words anymore. <laughs> yes, Jason. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, it's such an honor, friend. Truly. Thank, such you. Honor. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. We will definitely be doing this again. Thank you. Love it. Thank you. Mwah. Bye. Bye.